it's unprecedented. Israel's Prime Minister invited over the head of the US President by his enemies on Capitol Hill. But they were unrepentant. And so was he, basking in their unqualified adoration. Benjamin Netanyahu began paying respects to one man he won't be meeting during his trip to Washington. Israel is grateful for the support of, American, of America's people and of America's presidents, from Harry Truman to Barack Obama. Then he began spelling out his opposition to a deal close to Barack Obama's heart, the proposed nuclear agreement with Iran. This deal won't be a farewell to arms. It would be a farewell to arms control. And the Middle East would soon be crisscrossed by nuclear tripwires. A region where small skirmishes can trigger big wars would turn into a nuclear tinderbox. He pulled no punches, condemning an agreement that may only be days away from signing. For over a year, we've been told that no deal is better than a bad deal. Well, this is a bad deal. It's a very bad deal. We're better off without it. In one standing ovation after another, his audience gave its full-throated approval. Now we're being told that the only alternative to this bad deal is war. That's just not true. The alternative to this bad deal is a much better deal. The speech may have played well back home just two weeks before Israel's election, but there are plenty of critics there too, questioning their Prime Minister's wisdom. This speech has shored up support for Benjamin Netanyahu here in Congress amongst Republicans and some sympathetic Democrats. But he had their backing anyway. He's been preaching to the choir. Ultimately, it's the president who calls the shots over Iran. And this trip has only worsened relations between Israel and the White House. Barack Obama says he didn't watch the speech, but after reading its transcript, he didn't sound impressed. On the core issue, which is how do we prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon, which would make it far more dangerous and would give it scope for even greater action in the region, uh, the Prime Minister didn't offer any viable alternatives. Five other nations are also behind the proposed agreement with Iran. If the Iranians do sign, still a big if, it will take more than a speech to stop the deal from happening now. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News, Washington.